Welcome to the first Young Speaker CO3 Network Conversation with series. Today we have Jackson Tan, a well-established intrapreneur, from a one-man show to the managing director of an American company in Asia Pacific. Definitely there are a couple of milestones that you have taken in order to achieve and to be at this stage of your career. Uh, can you share with us, you know, what exactly uh, define the different milestones for yourself and how does that shape you as a person? Just a little bit uh, background on myself. Um, I started with this company, Adhesives Research, since 2000. Uh, prior to that, I was uh, working for a multinational, after which I uh, started my own company for a short period of about two to three years before I rejoined a uh, uh, international company as their managing director based out from Singapore. Um, when I started with them, um, the key consideration was this opportunity to be able to um, expand and develop the business in the Asia-Pacific region. Prior to this, I was basically very Singapore-based. Uh, so, you know, Singapore market is very limited. And when the opportunity came for me to uh, explore and experience uh, developing business in the Asia Pacific role that uh, really excited me. So um, from really starting out in Singapore, I then was able to um, explore to countries in the Southeast Asia region, uh, further ex expanding to the north, into China, into South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, and uh, us being an American company, I uh, travel regularly to our, our corporate uh, office in the United States. So I get to experience the Western uh, world too. Now, a lot of people do believe that traveling in business is something very sexy and uh, fun to do. Why don't you share with us your point of view about business travel? How does this all add up? to defining your time and defining your lifestyle? Um, for me, uh, traveling has always been uh, 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 well liked by me personally. I mean, it also depends on your nature. Some people don't like traveling. Some people worry about these um, unknowns. You know. Some people worry about the security, you know, the food. I think the important thing is if you have an open mind, you're adventurous, uh, be willing to try on anything. Right. I think that can be fun. Of course, you have to spend a lot of time doing your work. Uh, business traveling is about flying there in the daytime, meeting customers. In the nighttime, going back to your hotel, clearing the emails that you need to clear because you don't get the daytime to clear your work. So this is what I think is the tough part. But um, in certain days whereby you go out after the meetings and have dinners and have drinks with customers, I think that's the fun part. Um, sometimes you may have a business traveling that ends mm. on a Friday, that you're supposed to fly back on a Friday, that you can decide to take an extension and uh, at your own expense, stay on another three days just to explore the cities. I mean, this is excellent because um, your flight are all basically paid by the government, um, not the government, the companies, and uh, you're traveling for free. Those right. are the times that you get to explore the different cities. Sure. Um, I, I don't exactly know how many cities I've uh, been to, but I must say it must be in excess of 30. That's my, my rough guess. Yeah. The, the thing is that when people are in Singapore um, and you don't travel very much, you seem to think that whatever that you are doing or experience in Singapore is the norm. You know, this thing that everyone thinks the same, uh, things works. Uh, everyone has the same common sense that you feel is common. But I think when you travel overseas and you begin to uh, look at different people, meet different people, you realize that um, what you experience as you think is the norm or in certain times common sense may not be so common after all. You know? um, it can be frustrating 
I mean, my experience with uh, uh, traveling to China, for example, uh, is very frustrating because things don't work the way you think it's supposed to work. So you get frustrated, you question like, why aren't they like that? Why things don't go the way it smoothly go in Singapore? You know? Um, so it starts out with frustration more than fun. And when you're hit with so much frustration and a light bulb comes up and you say, okay, let's take a step back. That's when, when you take a step back and look at things the way they are and keeping an open mind, that's when I think the fun begins. That's when you then realize that uh, what you think people are supposed to behave, uh, what you think people should do, how they should respond, unnecessarily uh, uh, the way it's supposed to be that, that you have experienced in Singapore or in your home base country. Now, being an entrepreneur is something um, that is relatively new. You know, people talk about an entrepreneur is someone who is an entrepreneur, but while working for a bigger company, while working for a company. So, what exactly, you know, do you think are the important traits or the qualities that someone needs in order to become a successful entrepreneur? But that, I mean. This term about entrepreneurial, I mean, as I understand it, is someone who has the, is given that capability to act like an entrepreneur, yet uh, being hired by a company to do the job. Uh, as I've shared in the year 2000, the company that I'm with right now uh, gave me the opportunity to start up their full subsidiary in Asia Pacific. And in the year 2000, I started from scratch for them. Mm. from as basic as setting up a company with the uh, registrar of a company in Singapore to looking for the physical office to house myself basically I started as a one-man show and right. then developing the business developing the team so I had the opportunity to do that I'm still a, a very small team right now uh, in total in Asia Pacific um, from both the Singapore and China office there are only seven of us in total um, just sharing a little bit about the startup whereby I uh, did everything myself. So, um, well, I, you may be given a fanciful title, a managing director, but you really do everything from the administration to the financing to the bookkeeping. You do sales, you do uh, warehousing, you have to carry the goods sometimes, you have to deliver the goods sometimes, you know, it, it comes right. in the entire package. I think the most challenging part about doing all this is doing it yourself. You know, it, it needs a very s strong character, I think someone very determined um, to continue to push on because there will be times where you you feel down, you feel tired because uh, there's no one to talk to. I think whatever label you put onto the people, there are certain things that doesn't change. I mean, in the corporate world, in the entrepreneurial or the entrepreneurial world, there are certain key things that has to be carried through that cannot be compromised. I mean, integrity. I mean, you, you cannot compromise integrity. Once you've been given a trust, you better protect it like hell because right. uh, to be given a trust is something that I think needs to be well treasured. I mean, personally for me, I have a, a, a feel of both of them. Um, at this point of time, I'm uh, happy to be where I am. Um, for me, a job that allows me opportunities for personal growth, for me to continue experience new things, will continue to engage me till the point whereby this job don't allow me those opportunities. I may really go start up something myself because it's a long journey and. Uh, you need to have passion to do something because that's the only thing that will keep you going. Mm. Uh, 
money is important but I don't think money will be the driver that will continue excites you to do the things in a day out day day in basis so I think we really have to have passion in something to do I mean for me it's a passion to right. be able to meet different people to continue to learn and develop as a as, as a person so so yeah I mean when that stops in this current role as an entrepreneurial, I, I would certainly jump to become an entrepreneur. In the host of many statements you've talked about, you know, about themselves, uh, you, you chose this particular statement to comment on, that is to be able to dream big. So what exactly does it mean to you, to be able to dream big? Yeah, I mean, there were definitely a lot of statements that we got through. I think one of the yes. statements that struck me most were the youth talking about there is no limits to what they can do if they aspire to do it. I think uh, that strikes a chord with me very well. Um, right. I think it's good to dream big. Uh, uh, that is the first part. I think the next part is the execution part. I think Staying static at dreaming and not executing will not allow you to arrive at your dream. I think once you have a dream, excellent, you have fuel, you have passion, right. I think start doing it. Um, my, one of my previous boss always tell me, you have a big elephant that you need to slaughter. You keep thinking about wanting to slaughter the elephant, it's not going to be slaughtered. You have to start somewhere. and. You know, you have to slice the elephant part by part. So it's, it's a doing, small thing at a time that will allow you to ultimately slaughter the entire elephant. Okay. So I think dream is good, but start executing them uh, one at a time and that will lead you to your dream. All right. So to share with our audience here, you know, um, the fact that you have a lot of opportunities working, from, uh, working with youth, uh, youths from different regions. What exactly are the kind of advice you would give to help our youths here in Singapore and in Asia? What exactly they can do to help them to enhance their chance to succeed in this, in this world? The youth from uh, different countries, yes. the Western world, the Asian world, uh, has this uh, capability to to express themselves. I mean, in the, the Asian education system is very grinding, memorization. So the, I, I think the youth that grows up from this type of education systems have, has a, I, I wouldn't say less capability. Maybe they were not so exposed in terms of capability to speak openly and deliver their thoughts. Communication, clearly. Yeah, communication, communication skills. skills. Okay. I think the use from, from the Western world whereby in right. classes when you ask for a, for a comment, you have 10 hands coming up. But in the Singapore system, you ask a question, you hardly have hands coming up to, to speak. Um, this is where I think the use are different. I mean, in today's uh, youth that are in China and in India, um, I had a friend who is a trainer whom he has gone to India to do training and China to do training. Right. He is really impressed with the youth from China and India. Okay. I mean, when you ask, when you have a statement and you say you ask for comments, you have no shortage of people expressing themselves and then you have people who say, I would like to substantiate to that fact. So there's a lot of this interaction and energy right. amongst the youth. Uh, coming out from countries like China and India. So, uh, you know, our mindset is always the Chinese uh, are still learning, they are catching up. But I think if you have this real life experience, uh, uh, being there with them, you realize that what I impression and thought process you have with them may not be true at all. What is that one message you would like to leave behind? For me, I, I, I think. Um, the youth nowadays have got uh, much more support compared to maybe us where we have more siblings. Nowadays youth probably has lesser siblings okay. than our time. Uh, financially, you are given very good support, you know, life is good, you know, 
uh, the opportunity for education is obviously much more. We used to have two universities. Now I think we have four, maybe going on five with all the private schools. Right. So life is excellent. You know, opportunities are good. The economy is growing. I think in this very comfortable lifestyle, would you be willing to challenge yourself to go on to something despite the possibility that failure could be the next step. I think this is uh, something that you need to challenge yourself and when you take the step, I think it should be driven by passion, but without the worry of failing. Failure is not necessarily a bad thing. I think failure is an opportunity for you to pick mm, up something mm. that's valuable that I think is a platform for you to move on to greater things. So I think um, for me, that's something I would like to leave behind in, in this uh, conversation.